Okay, perfect days. Uh, Japanese film. I just saw it now. Um, first thoughts on it, right? Um, well, I liked it. <laughs> Shocker, perhaps, huh? Um, yeah, I liked it very much. I like this film very much, this movie. This film reminds me of, uh, fuck, I think it's Patterson, actually. I think it's just called Patterson, the Adam Driver movie where he's a bus driver. And it's just sort of mundane, you know, the, the ins and outs of his life. Nothing big, major happens, right? It's just a human's life. <laughs> and that's this film. That's what this movie is. <laughs> And I like that. I like these kind of movies that they're just sort of like um, um, mundane. They're just uh, I, you, I guess you can say boring, right? For people uh, um, <laughs> that like to see, like I, I watch movies to escape my reality. I don't want to see someone do their job and their morning routine in the movie. Like I want to see something happen. <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, you can, I could classify, yeah, a boring movie, mundane movie. It's not for everyone, right? It's not a film that everybody would sort of like, right? Um, perfect Days. I wonder what the title is supposed to mean with it. I'm not quite sure. I guess his days are perfect. I mean, he doesn't have anything to be ungrateful for. He eats every day, right? And he's got a place to go to and his car works. We, we get a scene, right, with the young man, his co-worker, Takashi. When I think his name is, uh, and I think our main character is like Hama or Hiriyama, something like that. I think that's his name. Um, but yeah, his the young coworker Takashi, he uh, <laughs> he has the the bike, right, the scooter, and it breaks down in the uh, in the movie. Like when he's cleaning the bathrooms outside, the girl comes and he's like, "Oh my God, you you actually came through, you made it, you came." Aya was her name or something. She has the hair dyed blonde and. <laughs> and uh he tells like um he tells uh Hiriyama or we'll call him Yama that way I remember it. We'll call he tells Yama, right, the old man, the main character, hey can I can I drive your car? Like it's very important for me, this girl, I wanna win her over. You know, I wanna I, I want her to be my girlfriend, right? Because he, he tells him before when she's outside that like, oh I gotta speed this job, I'm almost done with my shift, you know. Yeah, that's my girlfriend out there. <laughs> But then we get the inside that uh, that he's like buying for affection. They're not official yet, you know. And then later in that scene, later in that in that same day, I guess in that day with that scene, the uh, what's his name, the young man Takashi, he um, he's he look, he's looking at the cassette tapes, right? And he says to uh, to um his friend like hey let's go let me show you a place where they sell cassette tapes and, and really he's going there so he can try to sell his cassette tapes he screams them up like a fucking yama walks around he's looking at the tapes and stuff in the store <laughs> that that takashi has brought him to and and fucking uh what do you call he's talking to the clerk and the clerk's telling him yeah you know 80 70s tapes like these these you can get some decent money like 80 dollars for that one right there this one could be 120 120 for that one right there some some nice cash huh decent and, cause, and i guess so i know it's in yen well i think they say dollars actually for the translation but it's obviously right it's in japanese yen and i wonder maybe it's 80 dollars as in like this many yens translates to 80 dollars i guess maybe it's so it, but uh <laughs> he's impressed with this you know he, he says to yama like you know like having a girlfriend and being broke it'll just they don't match up they don't come they don't go well together you know to be broke and have a girlfriend it is it, not working out for me and um but anyhow yeah so <laughs> that that's happening and and uh and he he like he's he has the consent tape in his hand the 121 the one that's specifically 100 and like 20 dollars and and he he's he's telling him like hey if you sell this you know it would really be you would really help me out because then you know i can go to this bar with this girl you know woo her over like today could be tonight could be my night to finally win her affection right and uh <laughs> and and so he darts uh, and and he he's like gonna hand him i forgot what happens actually if he's gonna like hand it to him but then he runs away um and and the yama just stands there like hey like give it give me my tape back like come on i'm not playing this with you give me my tape back that's mine you're not gonna sell it i'm it's 
he want that 120 and and but he he so he gives him the tape back right after pulling that stunt and he still gives him money he still uh he pulls like like three bills he gives him the two bills and then he gives him the last bill and he's like oh thank you thank you thank you you won't regret you you, you know you just saved my night oh you're the best i like you uh he says the nine out of ten right he gives he gives people a rating so like, i give you nine out of ten that's how much i like you <laughs> and um the next day from that scene um i think he's cleaning the bathrooms right there we're at one of the bathrooms and that's another thing i like with this is we have like a routine in the film right where he cleans a certain set of bathrooms around uh, shibuya i think it was what well, it says the tokyo toilet then it says shibuya on his uh on his uniform and he cleans like a certain set of toilets around i guess shibuya it is and um what do you call uh how hot is it? I don't want my phone to get too hot here, but it's a little chilly outside. What was I thinking in my head? Fucking Takashi mentions. I guess it didn't go so well. He mentions like, you know, maybe maybe I'll just forget about this girl. I tried that night and and didn't really seem to work to pan through. And uh, and we know like so earlier uh, earlier way earlier in the scene when Takashi's driving Yama's car and the girlfriend's in the, the vehicle, they put on one of the cassette tapes. She picks it how actually one of his concepts saying she asked if he can play it he's like yeah sure go ahead and and it's cute whenever um and his like niece does this too when they're gonna put the cassette tape in they're like about to put it wrong <laughs> and he has to say no 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 let me show you and he you know flips it there it goes like that like that's how you're supposed to put it in <laughs> um what was i thinking but yeah so uh the the girl she returns the tape right the girlfriend yeah anna or yeah anna something like that a n y or yeah i think it was i think ani i think it would probably be ani right was how you at least in english how you would say it right it's uh yeah she goes to return the tape to him and he goes to grab it but she's not letting go and she says well you know can i listen to one more time and he's like so he obliges and he's there in the car listening to it and she asked him, like, hey, you know, what did Takashi say anything about me, right? Because he's yeah, a co-worker. And indeed he did, right? But he doesn't say anything to her. He says, and that's another feature of the character, right? Of Yama's character. He just stays, uh, he's very quiet. In the car, Takashi's, like, talking to the girlfriend. And he's like, this guy's weird. You know, he doesn't talk. I don't think I ever really heard him speak much words. <laughs> I talk to him, you know, say shit back. Weird guy, eh? It's <laughs> you like and kind of insults him in the car, right? In that one, in that same scene, right when they're in the car together. But uh, what do you call? Uh, she gives him the yeah, so gives him the tape back. Says like we listen. They're in the car listening, and he she asks that question, he doesn't answer her, which I guess she takes as like a negative. She because you guess you can see her face changes. She gets sort of emotional. I'm thinking, oh, maybe she's gonna start crying. Um, again, she like she kisses him. <laughs> Which is kind of a funny scene, right? Uh, she kisses him real quick on the cheek and then quickly runs out the car, like opens the door, runs out. And and, and Yama's just shocked. He's like taken back by that. <laughs> it's, uh, let's get to the niece scene. Well, I guess, you know, kind of the rundown. This is going to be in chronological order, right? But so there's this other scene. Um, The niece, she runs away from home right from his sister and they're like kind of estranged she they, the niece mentions to uh to yama hey you know mom your mom said that you and mom have a good relationship and he's like oh she told you about that and, and she's like well whenever i try to bring you up you know she changes the subject she don't want to talk about you okay so it's like you know so evident okay i guess there's you're not in good terms or whatever right now but not such a great uh, relationship together and so um she's uh how do you call what was i thinking in my head she she runs away from home right they get into a fight she gets in a fight with mom she runs away at home and she even tells like her uncle right because on yama's her uncle he tells them like this is my plan all along this is my first time doing it i don't always run away from home it's actually the first time i'm doing it and my plan was if i'm gonna run i guess from home i'm gonna go to my uncle's house and she and she knows where he lives right and i guess mom didn't know or maybe mom had a picture because when later because i think she's at his house maybe like three days or so you know she gets a he gets a call this is in the bathhouse scene where he's on the phone with someone 
and and it, it's like it's like obvious like oh that's the mom it's the mother that's calling right and, and telling him like hey you know I'm, I'm gonna come pick her up i figure out like she's at your house right yeah okay i figure yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna pick her up soon you know like tonight actually so you know plans in motion right and it's uh what was i thinking of oh my gosh where was i i was somewhere the sister is rich i know that and i'm guessing maybe yama was rich too where they have money or they come from like a higher background because she she asked him like are you is it true are you really cleaning toilets <laughs> Are you is that really what you're doing for your job? Are you really cleaning toilets? And and like I mentioned earlier, like she didn't know that he lived in that apartment. The apartment, you know, seems like kind of dingy, um, little rundown, right? It's not a it's not a glamorous apartment. It's a small, like two um, two floor building. It's tiny, um, but it's cozy and comfy, huh? And it seems his unit. It's a small unit, I guess. It's got an upstairs with a bedroom, a, like two rooms, or like with the sliding door thing and then you go down i guess there's some other compartment there and like that's it like it's a small apartment right it's a cozy apartment it's uh let me put the air here a little cool so the phone isn't overheat um and, and so yeah that was funny and we see that she's wealthy because like the she's in this sedan and the sedan's like you can see that it's a it's a like a nice car right it's like a expensive car well and then she found the private driver in the car right <laughs> i don't even she doesn't even drive the car she's got a private driver um that when the daughter comes down with the stuff because the mom's like no you're coming back with me you're not gonna be staying with your uncle you're coming back you know they, you're not they're running away it's over now the three days whatever it's done it's uh so when she's coming down the stairs um the guy the driver gets out and opens the door for her right the chauffeur and so it's uh and she mentions this to him. She says, hey, are you going to visit dad in the nursing home? And this is kind of cool. We got some little insight into Yama's, like, background, I guess, with this. is like, I guess maybe the father was abusive or he wasn't the best man, right? The father was um, a little, uh, perhaps extreme in some way. Because um, she, tells, she tells Yama, you know, he doesn't recognize anything anymore. Like, he's not going to speak to you the same way. He's not going to do the same things. He's uh, he's in a nursing home now, the fodder, and I guess he's you know he's maybe going a little senile, maybe dementia, right? Some sort of uh, he's not the same person that that the person that you knew before. He's not that same person. You gotta all that shit that he did. He ain't gonna do that. <laughs> he ain't gonna do that. He don't even remember. He don't even recognize shit. Honestly, like it's uh, but she tells him, "Hey, have you ever gonna visit him in the nursing home?" And, and Yama shakes like no, like his head no. And, um, but I guess maybe he does, he does have some love for his sister, right? Despite whatever broken relationship they had, they still have, because they, he hugs her and we see like when they drive off that he's crying, he's got tears in his eyes. And, uh, and it's sweet that she even buys him, um, his favorite chocolate, apparently just this little bag that she gives him. He's like, it's your favorite chocolate in there. And he's like, oh, oh okay, thank you. <laughs> Yama does this, uh, he's got this hobby. He's got many hobbies, actually. And one of the hobbies that he has is, um, caring for plants. So he's got these plants inside his home that he sprays with water. Like, um, every morning, right? Every morning he sprays with water or leaves, their soil. And, um, we've seen this one scene where he goes to this park. This is a park that he goes to often for his lunch, actually. And when he goes to this park to eat his lunch, which is like a sandwich and some milk, the, uh there's a there's a, a priest and in the, in the credits it said the priest and um and there's like a shinto shrine so i'm not sure maybe in, in shintoism um they use the term priest or whatever um but it's like some you can see it's some sort of religious figurehead that he nods in respect to and um i was thinking when he was nodding to him maybe he, like he's not just greeting him but like asking permission because i think he nods at him like two times and he like kind of gestures to this little plant this little sapling next to the tree as if maybe to say like hey can i have this you mind if I take from your property, your garden, whatever, this little sapling? And he, like, pulls out his wallet and he has this paper, newspaper mache thing that he can unfold. And actually, like, put the sapling in with soil. <laughs> so that was a cute scene. That was a cute scene. And, uh, and then later in, in that same scene, when he's back at the house, 
back at his apartment he's putting the sapling in his own little um pot even right like ceramic pot you know and like the room that they're in it has like this purple like i guess i don't know if it's a black light but it's like a purple light for the plants maybe it helps because they're inside all day they're inside plants they're not outside <laughs> So, so this this little lamp that he's got, I guess, you know, gives them makes allows them to make the photosynthesis, right? So they can actually make their food, and so that was cute. Um, at this park, right, with the Shinto shrine that he goes to, um, that I think he cleans the bathrooms down by it. I think they're the the kind of like some silo looking bathrooms, right? like cylinders, small little silo looking bathrooms. And that's another thing cool. This film, like different types of bathrooms that he cleans. And uh, we'll get back to that little bit in a moment if I remember. But there's this lady, this woman at the park that uh, that he um, that every time he's there to eat lunch, she's also there. This lady and um, how do you call uh, what were they thinking in my head? The woman's uh, they like make eye taunts. I guess he likes her. He finds her attractive, maybe perhaps because when he looks at her, he smiles and, and he he does like second glances at towards her right maybe they catch her attention and but they seem like they're very shy right he's like he's not gonna say or approach or anything and then she over there um how do you call she kind of she almost looks kind of worried or like scared <laughs> actually <laughs> it's kind of funny she actually looks kind of worried or scared sort of um when she you know took note of like oh you're looking at me oh shit and and she also eats a sandwich just like him, which is like another cute thing about it. Um, and this is kind of a cool tidbit with the film um, that I liked, which is that uh, he never, we never got a scene where they talk to each other or like acknowledge each other further more than looking, right? And I think maybe that was like you know nice little realism in there where you can see somebody, and maybe be intimidated by them or you just. Uh, or they seem afraid of you or you know i don't want to breach any boundary maybe they're not interested in talking so i'm just not going to say anything to them kind of ordeal <laughs> um which is i thought it was a nice touch yeah we never see them actually interact with each other there's another scene it is like a recurring theme in the film where there's a piece of paper stuck in this um one of the cubicles i think it's in the females stall actually um one of the bathrooms where it's a fucking uh how you call it's a, a piece of line paper and it says tic-tac-toe right it's a tic-tac-toe game where there's a circle in the center of it the the hug right and and at first he's gonna throw it away but then when he gets in the car he he kind of thinks to himself well you know maybe maybe i'll play the game maybe i'll let me see what happens but i put an x and i put it back in there and and sure enough when he goes back there and he checks he sees his x there right and not x a uh, a hug right an o and so that becomes a cute gimmick <laughs> i like that i like that when we when we first see it they show us to the audience i'm like oh no way he's not he's gonna throw it away which i mean i would have been fine maybe he just threw it away but i said maybe well have some fun with it right like with sucking maybe put an x and fuck it put that bitch back in there and see what happens and he does that which was which i liked um ultimately because we see towards the end when uh like nobody wins the game either basically <laughs> this game of tic-tac-toe nobody wins the game because i think you know to win tic-tac-toe you have to be like an instant in the moment does it so you don't have time to like o look over the board and realize oh wait I, if i block them here they can't complete it over here right so nobody wins the game but when it's all said and done they uh they write in english so i guess maybe they were foreigner thank you right they write thank you with a smiley face uh, i think it's smiley face even on the o too <laughs> which is really cute uh, so that was a sweet scene they have like little touchy moments like this in the film little um tidbits of uh just kind of the mundane right i think that's maybe the principle of this film it's just some this kind of guy going through his life motions older gentleman right yama the uh He's got another hobby so another of his hobbies is taking pictures and he takes pictures with an old camera i think it's it's like the one with the film roll and the film roll camera he even goes to a shop to buy new rolls and then he even like hands over the roll to be developed as well as purchases a new roll and we see when he takes pictures he takes them at the uh he takes photos at the park the park with the shun or the shinto shrine right <laughs> the one that he gets the sapling from 
he points the camera up and i like this kind of feature with him that he doesn't look into the eyepiece of the camera he's he merely just points it upwards towards the tree's um canopy and he just snaps a picture of it he just snaps pictures it's um and he even like sorts through his pictures. Like, he doesn't save all of them like when we get a scene of him um the first scene right is uh, i think maybe the only scene actually but it's just like it just establishes hey he does this he'll sort through the pictures and he'll like pick the ones he likes and then he'll rip open <laughs> he'll save those ones and um and he even dates the box like 23 because it's the movies right set in 20 2023 so it'll be 2023.5 so what i'm guessing is the month right and i wasn't paying attention too much because actually now i realized when he does it the first time that we see him the box has i probably had the month that where it's set in right in the film i think it was five <sighs> like spring or, or summertime i mean definitely around there because it's not it doesn't look like it's too chilly outside the sun's out there's no snow right um but yeah he does this he'll rip up he'll rip the ones he doesn't like and <laughs> keep the ones he does and i gotta chuckle out the audience did too when he was doing that um when he's with his niece in the park so usually you know, he's alone and so he takes pictures just of nature but when he's with his niece he actually takes pictures of her um <laughs> which was sweet it was a sweet touching thing it's uh kind of having a little friend with him because she tells him uh hey can i just go with you can i just go to you with work you know like yeah i i ran away from home i'm in your house but like can i just go with you to work and like i don't have to stay at your house i mean what am i gonna do <laughs> Well, what do I do if I'm just all alone in your house, you know? <laughs> it's a cute scene uh, when she tells him, like, hey, that tree, is that, your, is that tree your friend? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, he thinks about it. He thinks about it for a while. He answers her. Well, you know what? You're right. Yeah, that is my tree friend. Because I guess maybe he sits on this particular bench a lot. And, and he takes pictures of, like, that tree's canopy in particular. And, like, towards the end of the film, we even get a a definition there's a word in japanese that describes like the the passing of light through a tree's uh canopy like do a tree's leaves and like how it uh casts shadows i guess or how it like peeks through and in the in in the uh definition even mentions that it's a once you know it's a moment that only occurs once which is like true is it it's not like every leaf every grain of sand that's probably um, ever made right it's, it's unique onto itself is it so that's a nice little tidbit there of like every um every uh how do you call a little smudge my glass that i have to get rid of later you know, so that's fun but like every every like photo he takes of this is it's a moment that can't be re-replicated right so it can't be captured again there's a scene um this is like the first night that the the girl the niece is staying over at yama's place right and he's like walking up the stairs i want to wake her so he waters his plants and then he goes to grab his uniform to go to work and that's when she tells him initially hey you know can i can i just go with you to work and he's like yeah i guess sure that's fine and <laughs> and i guess he's not used to having a, a woman in the house or something but she, she she then proceeds you know to take her shirt off right <laughs> and he like darts down the stairs i thought that was funny <laughs> but he just <laughs> like it was fast too like bro like the minute she started stripping that shirt off and we got like a little shot of like her bra under like he just darts downward at, after that that was kind of funny um what else happens here takashi quits takashi quits and, and he calls him he calls him to tell him hey you know sorry friend but i quit but don't worry i'll pay you back you know but like yeah i just wanted to tell you like hey i quit you're not gonna see me on the rounds to clean the toilets and shit and um and this is not good for the car because he works the morning shift he works the morning shifts and we see like in the film when he's the same day like he'll come home from work change up his clothes and then he'll go out and enjoy his the rest of his day you know he'll, he'll frequent like um he goes underneath like in this um down these stairs he goes to this particular restaurant underneath like i guess in the metro system where they bet on the baseball <laughs> And, and and the guy there he's a regular there he'll say hey look who look who's back guess who's back here he is and he always gives him like his drink which i'm so sure is what it was i'm guessing it was maybe alcohol perhaps or like lemon water or something because it's a beverage that he's given 
um, not only at that place, but like even at this other restaurant that he frequents. And he said he's been frequenting there like at least five, six years because that's how long it's been open. Um, that the woman, they call her mama, right? They call her mama. It's, uh, how do you call them? Um, what were they thinking of? That was something that crossed my mind. Like maybe if it's even the same drink that he gets there, that he gets at the other place, there's always sort of ice, it's clear, but I don't think it's just water. I think it's, I want to think that it's like some sort of liquor or maybe has some sort of sweet drink of some sort. But yeah, he's got a, He's got the rest of the date then and we see that he does things right he does, he does his laundry and he, like he goes to the bath house and uh what was i thinking of fucking like he goes to the bath house usually alone and but one time he goes with his niece he goes to the niece to the bath house and so he goes into the men's area and then she goes into the woman's area and he's like 10 minutes because i guess that's how long for him he, take, he takes a shower and then he goes into the water and then he dries off afterwards and she's like 10 minutes that's so short and he's like oh okay well 12 then <laughs> two extra minutes i guess makes a difference perhaps but yeah that's what he tells her like oh that's too short for you then let's do 12 minutes right and um there's these two old men these two other men that they go there as well there's no scene with them when they talk they they give each other like um, oh hi hello um like a greeting but besides that there's no other scene of like them actually conversating but i thought it was cool when he's uh how do you call he's leaving like um she's there right the girl and the two men are in the lounge area the two girls are there and then he comes in um and he's talking to her and they're like surprised by this and and that's actually the same scene where we get the phone call where the sister is calling him to tell him like hey you know i'm coming <laughs> i'm coming to pick her up sorry for the inconvenience i'm gonna come pick her up though and uh and, and so yeah she's like gonna grab some drink from this cupboard sliding door thing and he's like oh you know are you are you hungry that's why you're getting the drink or something you're hungry it's time to eat then right and she's like oh okay yeah yeah fuck it let's go eat and and the two men like as they weaving they're like kind of shocked like what he's, he's got family right he's, who is this lady who is this young girl that you just brought she's probably like she's definitely an adolescent right she's maybe like 16 at least 16 17 right you can see that she's a she's a young girl right like a teenager and uh where was i another more more tidbits right from this film that uh that i enjoyed very much his other hobby i guess we'll get to that he reads he reads he reads books and in the credits of the film they even mentioned they even um mentioned the books in the in the credits and i like that it's a diverse He's got like English authors or like um, authors with like English surnames and then uh, Japanese surnames. So he reads like a diverse portfolio of <sighs> of different uh of different authors, right? In the books and and the 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 librarian that uh they don't ever say hello or or anything, but but they have like um like every time like the book's one dollar and this is the only time in the film where we get a uh, how do you call it? we get a translation of like like wording like poster on screen right of some sort of signs on screen and when we get that translation it says uh, one dollar per book one dollar poor book for, per book oh sorry per book one dollar per book and um she uh she'll like she'll like she's just sitting there reading and she'll look over like oh what is he picking out now and and then he'll like when he's about when he's gonna pay he just, he doesn't look at her he's just reading the book but he's like reaching in to get the coin the one dollar coin or whatever and and that's when she'll always, she'll make a comment like oh like and there's every author that he grabs she'll make a comment like oh that author you know that author it's a really good read or they're underrated or like that particular author i read that book too and it taught me you know some sort of life lesson about this or that so it's got like a little funny tidbit with her and and then it's like the guy with the photoshop that he comes in he always says thank you thank you right and uh <laughs> i like this 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 thing where they're like doing their own thing the the shop owner person and fucking um yama will come in and he'll like you like put something on the table just grab it like they nobody really nobody looks at each other maybe it's a japanese thing perhaps like nobody giving the eye contact much or anything like that or like a hello greeting just a thank you right they'll say thank you like oh thank you um but nothing really more than that it's just sort of <laughs> just uh just a girl just the um 
just a thank you um but yeah that's uh and that's like his hobbies and we i like that we get recurring places in the film we get him going to recurring places in the film which for me sort of established um you know like a nice pattern right this is what he frequents what he does and the in the one scene where takashi quits he gets a call like so takashi calls him and then right after takashi calls him he gets a call from his employer and his employer says oh hey listen the guy just quit so you gotta like can you cover you gotta cover for him basically you gotta cover like like i said bathrooms like he would have cleaned because it seems like they don't clean the bathrooms always together like some bathrooms they clean separate and then others they'll clean together and so in the film um we see that it runs later into the night so like his day is completely gone it's just consumed by work and i like this scene because we even get like different bathrooms in this scene ones that we haven't seen before already which i guess is like like this he this is your bathrooms that how do you call uh what i think in my head <laughs> that he doesn't normally do he doesn't normally do these bathrooms and he calls his job he even calls his job like i've been trying to call you guys like three times already i guess he leaves him a voicemail just to say like like i'm only doing this today okay outside and this is like it's nice because like him he has an expressive emotion right he's, he's angry he's not he's upset about this and you can hear in his voice and his demeanor like i'm only doing this in one day you hear me after today i'm not doing it i'm I'm a morning shift i work from you know wake up this time work to this time that's it the rest of the day is mine i'm, I'm not doing this shit you know so that was funny the little uh he keeps it brief but very stern right like it's only the one day i'm doing this there's this boy with down syndrome it's uh that takashi like friends with takashi and he likes like play with his ears and <laughs> it uh and he and he because like yama like hears the commotion he looks into like the bathroom that takashi's cleaning with the young the young boy the down syndrome and he's like oh this guy you know he's a friend of mine and went from you know quite quite some bit of ways the boy has been maybe like 13 at most you know it's a young kid and uh and Takashi mentions that they, I guess he calls him ear boy the kid calls him ear boy and he likes to play with my ears see and the kid's like you know playing with his ears <laughs> and um so but that one scene that when Takashi quits and he's not there the boy comes and he's looking in the bathrooms and he checks the the one to the right right or one to the left and he checks the middle one he gets to the one that Yama's working in the Yama's cleaning and um how do you call uh you know yama he the boy looks at him and he says takashi like like is he not here like where is he he just says his name and and yama looks at him it's like oh takashi's not here yeah <laughs> there's no takashi today sorry kid and the kid's sad he's got a sad phase and he just runs off um into the night right away from the bathrooms so that was kind of a sad scene right of the uh the kid like you kid enjoyed to see him right <laughs> This um so obviously like cleaning bathroom there'll be scenes where people have to use the bathroom and some people like uh they'll they'll come up like oh <laughs> oh and and he'll get up and you know get his cleaning supplies and come out the way and he'll like he'll wait either like right at the entrance or like he'll walk a bit of ways and then just wait there for them to finish using the bathroom right it's uh but there's one scene that that was <laughs> kind of cool kind of cute when this driver he's like apologizing profuse like i'm so sorry I'm, I, I have to go really bad i'll make it quick okay thank you thank you and uh it's like a taxi driver or something and um and even in that one scene where takashi quits what do you call uh the meter maid i guess they're meter maids they're they enforce the parking right you can't just leave your car there parked and uh and Takashi comes out from cleaning the bathroom. He's like, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. It's like, can you just give me some time? Like, I'm almost done, you know, doing my thing here with the bathrooms and shit. I'm almost. And then in the meter maze, they're like, cool. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll, uh, you know, we'll let you do your thing. <laughs> wait, you came out just in time and you seem like, you know, you, you said, I'm just done with this bathroom. I'm going to clean this one. Can you please not give me a ticket or anything? And uh, they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I, now that that I, now that I said this, I just remember this other scene. This is actually the cassette tape scene. So after fucking um, the kid leaves, right after the Kashi leaves with the money that Yama gives him, and he has his cassette tape back, the one twenty one. He's uh, he's driving on the road, and then we get he gets uh, he puts his blinkers on because he realizes his car's out of gas, right? 
so he parks it on the side and he's like you know so no there's no gas station nearby <laughs> and so he pulls out the cassette tape that he had in his pocket the 121 and he looks at it and then he walks off in the um direction of which he just came from so it's, presumably he's going back to that because the, the store right to sell it or something right because uh he's got no gas in the car. he ran out of gas and his car is just sitting there <laughs> He puts the hazards on. He's got his car sitting on the side. Got no gas in the car and the vehicle. So it's like a, it was kind of a funny scene. Um, there, like, you know, I didn't want to sell my cassette tape at that moment. But then, I had the money I had in my wallet. I had given it to the young man. Right, gave it to the Kashi, and now my car's running out of gas. And well, he said, "Well, I can get one twenty for this cassette tape. I need gas. I can't just leave my car there." So okay, I guess. Um, you know, I have to go do that. <laughs> go sell it. The daughter, the uh, not the daughter, the niece, right? They have this moment on the bridge, which is um, which is I guess it's the the first touching moment, and there's like a second one, right? But the first touching moment on that bridge is when she's telling him like, "Hey, this river does it go to the ocean?" He says, "Yeah, it does. It goes to the ocean." And she's like, "Well, can we go there? <laughs> can we go to the ocean?" he's like yeah sure we can do that next time and and she tells him like well, when's next time like how long i don't have to wait for that and he just tells her next time next time is next time now is now and 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 so it becomes like a little like a saying for her i guess like next time like next time is the next time and now is now <laughs> and they're riding their bikes while they're saying this it's uh it's just kind of it's a good way to segue into like the dream i guess they're dream sequences they have this black and white like kind of stocky footage and it only happens when they come when yama falls asleep is when we get these these sequences like night the transition that kind of reminds you of the drive away dolls right when they do the trippy transitions but in this one we get the i guess we get dreams to transition with um yama's dreams and they're in black and white and they'll be like kind of like stuff that he's seen throughout the day basically what these dreams would be Cause like after that one scene when they're riding their bike, he's got like the, the it's like his dreaming about the niece riding her bike, right? Um, and like doing like the swivels on the bike. It's uh, got a couple more things I want to cover. The homeless man was cover him real quick. He was kind of cute. The homeless guy that he's he's even got like a tent in the background and he's like imagine he's like when he first sees him he's like hugging a tree and these are the bathrooms that are transparent but then you lock them and they become not transparent which i never seen before so i thought that was pretty cool these bathrooms but yeah there's that, that there's even a scene with a tourist that relates back to this scene this british woman where she's she tells him i like she says says in english too but i guess maybe he's heard it like takashi knows some english he listened to english music right that uh she tells him, like how the hell do these work <laughs> she just says it in english to him like out of the blue and takashi's like oh you know let me not let me demonstrate for you closes the door locks it turns transparent <laughs> and then she comes out and then he comes out and then she gets it at that moment which i thought was kind of funny um with that one scene because i'm thinking i'm thinking maybe she went into the the room and she did lock it I'm thinking like, you know, did try to lock the door and uh and maybe it didn't work for her. Maybe there was like a press a button or something, but but no, he just he just demonstrates that to her. He goes, closes it, opens, and she's like, Oh, thank you, thank you. And she even says thank you in Japanese, like thank you very much. Like and then she closes it, locks it, it turns transparent. No, transparent to like you can't see through, right? And uh we hear her giggling about like, Wow, like this is so cool. Which would probably be me, right? If I was in Japan and I was using one of those bathrooms, I would probably be like, like, this is so cool. What the fuck? I can, like, I close this and this is, uh, you know, you can't see me in this bathroom, oddly enough. Another cool thing with this, uh, what else scene I wanted to cover? It's, um, I can't, I've had it on the tip of my tongue and it's kind of escaped me now but maybe i'll remember when talking about the so i guess the second touchy moment i would say in the film is uh it's like takashi goes to that restaurant that mama works at right i guess she owns it actually she owns that place but he we see that when he goes there it was later in the day so when he arrives this time it's early and so it's, it makes sense that he went to open the door and it's locked there's a laundromat place across the street so he's like okay well i guess i'll go wait in there you know read my book 
and he does that and then later he hears people talking outside and he sees it's her and he sees it's this man and he's thinking oh maybe it's just a patron and that's why like she's opening it and the patron wants to come and eat food and she's like yeah of course yeah come in and um and eat my cooking and shit um but but then we get the scene when they when they go in together they're having like an intimate moment they're hugging and Takashi sees this and he just immediately um he flees away right <laughs> there's uh maybe he felt he feels bad right oh I, mean, I, was, I intruded on something that i shouldn't have so he he runs he, he you know he cycles away from that and we see the next scene that he buys a pack of beers and a smokes and i couldn't swear it was like a three pack of beers not a uh what do you call not a four pack but maybe my eyes deceived me but i couldn't swear it was it was three and not not uh not like three and not four and i get to that reason well actually let's we'll just get to it now because he we see it, he goes to the park right and he's drinking he's drinking a beer okay and it looks like maybe he could have been drinking two beers in that one scene um but then when he has the second beer there and he's lighting the cigarette and this guy comes up and when you see the guy come i'm like oh that has to be like the dude from earlier because even look, he has the same silhouette he had glasses on and we find out that it is that gentleman right but he he also says hey can i have a cigarette too and he gives him a cigarette and he's lighting it up and he puts like the cigarette in the can i think he does i think he like because he has like one beer he drinks it and then how do you call uh and then he opens another one so that's like two beers right so if he has three then he should only have one beer left which i guess he actually had four because he offers him a beer because it looks like when he smokes he he coughs takashi takes a hit of it just one and then he starts coughing <laughs> very violently so i guess like okay i'm not gonna smoke and then the other guy you know he says hey can i have a cigarette and then he lights it and then he starts coughing and he he comments like i haven't smoked in years i haven't smoked in a really long time it's been so long since i've last took a cigarette i'm not used to this anymore and it looks like takashi puts his can up to like hey put the cigarette in the can which i thought doesn't he still have like didn't he not finish the beer in the can i don't know and but then he puts a cigarette in there and he tells him like, hey i have a uh, another beer left do you want to do you want to drink you want to do you want to drink a beer with me and so they both get new cans of beer and they open them but like i said earlier like i couldn't have sworn it was a three pack of beer cans and not a not a four pack because it looked like because he, he drinks one beer and it looks like that like he finishes it but then when he walks up to like the cigarette it looks like he opens another beer i think it was i don't know maybe maybe my uh maybe my eyes were off or i missed something something went over my head just a little just a little thing i i noticed in that one scene maybe maybe perhaps a continuity error but but perhaps not even i have to see the id and b score and driving away dolls they had a continuity error with the champagne where the one shot it's like more full in one shot than the other shot um but anyhow yeah this guy that uh that was hugging mama in the um what do you call in her shop in her restaurant and this is when we learn about like he's you now he's the ex-husband they've been divorced like seven years and uh and he said to the to yama like i'm guessing you're like a regular at that place right and, and yama's like he confirms like yeah i am a regular there um been going there like like six like like he says five or six years since it opened basically so pretty much when it opened i've been going to that your your ex-wife's restaurant thing and and the guy says to yama like that how he has cancer and he's still getting over the chemo so i guess he had the cancer and he, he doesn't have it now at the moment but he's he just like recently like he just kind of won some battle with it so he says i'm just getting over the chemo at the moment but like you know he says he's he even says that he's married again he's remarried but he came to like maybe apologize to her but then he's like well actually it can't be that because like nothing happened like nothing bad happened i guess it wasn't a bad breakup of their marriage so he said well i guess i came to thank her and then but i think even when he, when he says thank her he's like well actually no i don't think i really came to thank her either i think i just wanted to see her again <laughs> and and maybe he's just gripping like it's that simple he's like justifying like why did i come to see my ex-wife and and that it's just i wanted to see that person again which i guess if you're married to someone right it's even after you get divorced for them and it's like like he said it wasn't a 
divorce out of bad, neglectful feelings, like scorn, I guess. Wouldn't the divorce out of scorn, then there would still be some fondness, right, there with each other. So that was sweet scene. And he's talking about, like, um, hey, you know, that's how life goes, right? You just don't know things sometimes. And, and then you then it's over. It just ends. And you end not knowing things. And he mentions, like, something about the shadow. Like, when shadows overlap, do they get darker? <laughs> And and Yama tells him, well, we let's find out right now, right? Because that's one thing we can test this right now. Actually, this shadow theory of yours. I'm a person. You're a person. We both have separate shadows. And so he runs up over to like the street light is, and and he's uh, overstepping. They're both. Um, he says, stand right here, and then he gets in front of him. Right, he steps in front of him as to uh, show the shadows. Right. <laughs> To see, like, let's see if they get darker with each other. Because if you step here and I step there, then we can see, like, if the shadows get darker with each other. And um, and the guy, the, the ex-husband guy, he's like, I don't see a difference. They look the same to me. In, in my eyes, I didn't see any difference. And this question even got me thinking, do shadows actually get darker? They overlap each other, right? It's, uh... But no, when they overlap each other's shadow with the same light source coming, you know, the same angle... It uh, didn't look like it got any different color, right? Didn't get any darker. But Yama was saying, oh, well, actually, I'm looking at it now. Oh, yeah, I think this one is dark in that one. You see it? <laughs> There's uh, I think he was, like, teasing him in that, that moment. Like, oh, no, what? Like, to be the voice of opposition. You said you see anything? Well, I don't see shit. I'm, look I'm standing right next to you. I'm looking at my shadow. And I'm like, nah, that's definitely not the same color as that other one. It's, uh... What was I thinking of in my head? In the one scene, there's a guy in the background. He's, like, brushing a dog. That was a cute scene. When the guy in the background brushing the dog. Um, brushing the fur off the dog. That was cute. That's one scene. Um, what else in this film? There was another scene that I wanted to discuss. Because I also liked it. Um, that I just it, it just... it just escaped me. I'm remembering the scene in the very beginning with the mom. And the little boy. That uh, he hears crying in one of the bathrooms. And this is kind of a cool bathroom. It's like kind of wood. It's like wood. Chopped up wood looking theme type bathroom. Some of the bathrooms that have like kind of a cool theme. Like I said, they they each they look different from each other. They all look uniform and the same. They look different from each other. The bathrooms. And in this particular bathroom, there's a little boy that he got lost. And he's crying. And uh, he's telling, you know, Yama's telling the boy, hey, it's going to be all alright. You know, let's, let's see. Let's go find your mom. And and when they're walking, like this is like shortly after walking outside of like the bathroom, the mom comes burling, like hurling in, and she's telling the son, like, "Where were you? I was looking for you everywhere." And I like that she never makes eye contact with Yama, never like acknowledges him, never uh, how do you call uh, how do you call take notes of him, right? Never takes note of him, never thanks him. It's like like he wasn't even there. <laughs> Which I'm like, maybe that's a Japanese thing, perhaps? I don't know. But yeah, he, does, he doesn't take note of him at all. And fucking, what do you call, uh, what was I thinking in my head? The little boy, when they're walking away, you know, and, and she's got a baby in the, in the stroller. And she's like, look, you even got him crying, right? The little brother's crying, eh, crying. Like a, she takes these wipes out and she wipes down her son's face and his hands. She's scolding him, like, oh my god, like, why are you run? I told you to stay, to stay close to me, not to wander like that. And so, so then she, like, calms down. They start walking away. And uh, and the little boy actually turns to Yama, and he waves by. <laughs> it's so cute. He waves by to him, actually. You know, it's like, so, like, you know, the little boy acknowledged. The little boy acknowledged Yama, right? But the mom didn't at all. <laughs> he, like, didn't even notice. It's, uh... But that was a cute scene, um right that he waves by them and and then the camera pans to like this sign with a kid crying and like he's standing in the pool and there's like garbage in the pool and, and i thought it was a funny parallel because the kid had a yellow shirt on and then when they pan to the image of the kid crying in the pool the kid in the image the cartoon has a yellow shirt on <laughs> so that was kind of funny um yeah perfect days this film what did i think about it I, I liked it very much i liked it very much it's a mundane film, I think. I think that's the perfect word to describe it. It's mundane. It's sort of uh, lackluster. Like, nothing big or major happens. It's just the telling of someone's life, basically. It's just, that's that's kind of the gist of it, is it? 
this older man that we don't know much about him besides like maybe his father was abusive they has a bad relationship with the sister and uh fucking what's it called uh what was i thinking in my head that uh that he has a niece right he has a niece it, and that that his job it's like um like the sister like i mentioned earlier the sister says is it true you're cleaning toilets like she's heard that so maybe he had some sort of job before in the past and maybe they have hints like this maybe they give you hints that i didn't catch on um that he uh how do you call that he was maybe he was making more money then or he had a falling out something happened right that now he's doing this job that's kind of lower it's seen as a low beneath you know you're you're beneath people now with this job and like you, are you proud of it like i wouldn't be proud of it it's um kind of ordeal it seems right when the sister tells her like this is you're doing that now and like then she tells like yama this is where you live like <laughs> well this is where you're living now it's true like like and, and she apologizes so she knows like she's being rude when she says this like like hey sorry like like i don't mean to be rude or anything it's just like i just thought like like wow this is really where you're living and like that's this is your job is what you do now and uh and yama's like yeah actually yes even Takashi asks him the same question. Even Takashi tells him, like, you know, he's got the whole setup in his his truck. I just I noticed that about you got the whole setup in, in the cleaning the toilets. Like this is like it's like masterful for you, is it? Cleaning toilets. And um so yeah. <laughs> Overall, uh, I like this one very much. Perfect days, five out of five from me. Um if you bothered to listen to his review, thank you for doing so. Um, until next time, huh?